and loosen your belt, for you are in too sore. Witcher, I have a matter of prime urgency and import. I must speak to you. Your wound, feeling better? It's healing splendidly, though I am to avoid trouble for some time. To be frank, that is precisely why I wish to speak with you. Want me to stand in for you? Take on some trouble on your behalf? That could very well be the case. You see, there is a maiden, nay, a lady. I suspect someone's cast an ill spell upon her. A curse, perhaps. Let me guess. She suddenly grew cold, haughty, and distant, though the night before she was flirtatious and alluring. Tut tut, Witcher! You jest, yet the matter is grave. Though true, the lady in question is dear to my heart. I shall not deny it. I fear she has fallen victim to ill magic, and knows no one she could turn to for help. What makes you think she might be cursed? You must keep all I say to yourself, I beg you. I would never dare to be so indiscreet normally, yet I'm troubled about her, for her. Vivian shuns the company of others. Though the fairest maid at court, she keeps men at a distance. I thus determined I would resort to trickery. Trickery? That even befitting of a knight? In war, yes. And what is love if not battle? As it were, one evening I crouched in hiding outside her seamstress's home. As Vivian emerged from it, I too emerged, ever so gently but convincingly collided with her, then promptly offered to escort her home. She consented. At first, all argued well. I proposed a more scenic route. She agreed. I made kindly forays into conversation, and she even began to respond as we neared the end of our route. Then suddenly... Then suddenly, mid-speech, from her mouth there flew a most hideous shriek. I stopped stone cold in my tracks while she turned red, then promptly ran off. I did not give chase, that time. I attempted to approach her on several ensuing occasions, to learn what had happened, for I feared she had become entangled in some trouble. I noted that often, come night, she ventures into the woods, where I've seen her walk about a glade near a pool. I've striven on occasion to follow her, but lost track each time. It seemed then she'd melted into the air. Sound you heard. She might have just had a sore throat. Had I thought it possible the sound was natural, I never would have taken up your precious time. Notice any other strange behavior? Additional symptoms? No, Vivian's avoided me wholly since the first encounter. But folk gossip. What about? They say she's secretive, that no one ever sees her after dusk. That she's wanted to suddenly disappear. Nothing unusual about any of that. Tell me more about Vivian. Who is she? What's her story? She's her enlightened highness's lady-in-waiting. Her mother was a lady-in-waiting, her father a knight. That is all I've learnt, for the Duquesa grows angry when asked about her. Vivian spends her days within the palace walls. Yet we are in luck, for she has been named a tourney's patroness this year. Thus, each participant will be granted an audience with her. Got a problem then. See, I'm not a participant. I've devised a solution already. You should take my place in the lists and thus gain the chance to speak to her. I was looking forward to winning the tourney, very much so. Yet for Vivian, I am prepared to sacrifice anything. This tourney, how's it work exactly? It is the year's grandest and most important contest. Knights from all corners come to face off for the grand prize. And more importantly, for glory. A demanding test of knightly prowess in horsemanship, marksmanship and fencing. I qualified for the first time had great hopes of winning. Yet... Yeah, I get it. Anything for Vivian. Fine, I'll look into it. Gotta admit, piqued my curiosity. I shall be forever in your debt. Now, we must ensure you are not eliminated from the tourney before you can meet Vivian. 
meaning. Could you show me how you shoot, ride and fight perchance? And you must learn the tourney rules, know how to apply them in practice. I, I did not mean to suggest I doubt your abilities. Everyone must train, even a witcher. Besides, the tourney contests must surely differ, require skills you don't usually apply, races above all. The choice is yours. Where shall we start? Apply all the skills you mentioned on a daily basis, and against monsters, not targets and dummies. Don't need any training. Going straight to the tourney grounds to sign up. I'll go to the inscription tent. Honor and glory... Greetings. Want to join the lists? Naturally. We must first see to formalities, however. At Guillaume's request, I have looked into your personal history in its heraldic aspects. Really? What did you come up with? My findings show you may take part as Geralt of Rivia. What a surprise. Or as the Honorable Ravix of Forhorn. It's not every year we have a combatant who can boast of two crests. Which do you prefer? Kinda curious what you could have learned about Geralt of Rivia. In the year 1267, a certain Geralt, a member of the Witches' Guild, was knighted by Queen Meave and dubbed Geralt of Rivia. This was in honor of his distinguished service at the Battle of the Bridge, said structure spanning the Yaruga, but I wager you know of which battle I speak. Hmm. Yeah. Those were the days. Kahir and I led a fistful of Nordlings against an entire Nilfgaardian battalion. Won that battle just because we absolutely had to cross the river. Ravix of Forhorn? How'd you manage to dig that up? Here in Toussaint, we treat heraldry very seriously. One visit to the Ducal Archives. That is all I needed to acquire the necessary information. Ravix of Forhorn was the name under which you attended a feast honoring Princess Pavetta, daughter of Queen Calanthe of Sintra, on the occasion of her 15th birthday. That's actually right. The Honorable Ravix will do. You may now take the shields bearing your crest. I'm a witcher. Shields aren't something witchers ever use in combat. Who mentioned using it in combat? Not I. The shield commemorates your participation in the tourney. You may take it as a souvenir. Hmm. In that case, thanks. Have you been instructed as to the tourney's challenges, prizes, and vows? If not, I do hope you will allow me to tell you about them. Guillaume told me a bit about the contests. Rather make sure I'm clear on them, though. An admirable thirst for knowledge. There are contests three. A shooting range, where you will compete side by side with an opponent. A horse race, during which you will seek to complete the course within a specified time. Any targets hit with bolts or dummies felt with blade will increase the time you have. Finally, the group melee in the arena, crowned with a duel against last year's champion. As each contest ends, its results will be posted on the board outside my tent. This way all will be apprised of who leads at any given moment. Convenient. Gonna come right out with it. I'm a sucker for prizes. The winner of each contest shall receive a trophy. Whoever has the best result once all contests have played out shall face last year's champion in a final duel for glory and the title. Should you defeat the reigning champion, the grand prize will be yours. This year, a sword 
forged especially for this occasion by the one and only Cornelius of Assengard, a famed master weaponsmith. Her illustrious highness had it brought all the way from Nazaire. You say something about vows? As is our custom, knights make vows to which they hold for the duration of the tourney. Each swears on something which to him represents his most cherished virtue. Feels like I know everything I'd ever want to know about chivalric tourneys. Splendid. In that case, you must make your vow. Upon what would you like to swear it? I solemnly vow on the Heron that in competing, I'll respect the chivalric virtues. May the gods succor you in your endeavors to overcome. Sign here, please, then fill out these forms. That is all I need from you. Now, as arranged by Guillaume, you shall be fitted with appropriate armor for the tourney. Hmm, shiny. You have also been assigned a tent for the tourney's duration. It stands near the arena. Good luck! Geralt, well, I'll be... Have you decided to turn Knight Errant? All jesting aside, here on a job. You in the 22? Am I? Ha! I shall square off against Rain Farn of Atre. I saw him just moments ago. A nervous wreck. Stuffing his nose with fish tech, no less. As if that would aid his determination. Guessing that's against the rules. But who's to tell the Nifgardian what to do? Listen, Geralt, I have a tip for you. The timing of your marksmanship duel is such that you shall have the sun in your eyes. Makes no difference to me either way. Nor will it give you any pleasure. Since, as it is, we must both wait. Play me in a round of Gwent. Should you win, I shall swap with you. To me, a southerner, the sun is no hindrance. Thanks. Another time, maybe. Ha! Ah, you've denied me some diversion, but at the least my eyes are in for a treat. Lady Vivian should appear shortly. Fair knights, I salute you! The honor and duty of tourney patron have fallen to me this year. Fight honorably, so that I may bestow upon one of your number the Tawny's grand prize. You have sworn your vows. You have ready body and soul. The time has come to test them. Behold Horm Akispark of the Mechtian royal line. His name's quite the mouthful, a true challenge to rhyme. His targets to be hit centrally and true are the ones in blue. Against him new blood, a knight unknown till now. Seraphix of Forhorn, give us a bow. The targets he must with his quarrels thread are red. May the better man win. Brave Seraphix has hit over one half of his marks. 
Will he manage to prevail? Are these glories first sparks? Seraphix has won! His boat struck the goal! Yet even this cannot soothe the ache in his soul! Your prize, sir. A crossbow adorned with your crest. I congratulate you. Thank you, my lady. Would you tell me about the other prizes? Alas, I cannot devote more time to you than to the other combatants. I have duties to attend to. Forgive me. My medallion's vibrating strongly can only mean one thing. Magic. The explanation is disappointing, I'm afraid. The fragrance I use, it's mixed by a sorceress. To lose to an opponent such as you is a victory of its own. Accept my congratulations as well. Thanks. Good work! In the interim, I managed to determine which tent Lady Vivian occupies. Perhaps you could find a clue within it. You're right. Vivian's cursed in some way. Sensed it when she opened the tourney. In that case, we've no time to lose. Let us go. Yeah, let's go now. This is her tent. You must look inside. Search it. I shall hoot like an owl should someone approach. Claw marks, that's clear. Not sure what beast left them, just that it's big. Oh, fair Vivian. Thou hast Duff's eyes within thy locks. Thy lips... Jar of concealing ointment. Powerful magic at work here. Clothing's all dark green and yellow. Seems Yen's not the only one with a fixed color scheme. Nea's and salts. Hmm. Used to make compresses. Someone approaches. Quickly! You were supposed to hoot. We shall speak later. We must return to the tourney now. It's, it's time for the second contest. Sirs, what seeks you in my lady's tent? Inspiration? Be gone from here! Why were you in there? Uh, tourney business. Nothing of import. Gallant knights and ladies decorous, gaze at the host assembled before us. Look upon chivalry's best and most storied. Come from far lands, here to seek glory. Hear now their names as I shout them aloud. Savor their titles of their presence, be proud. Palmerin, the Baron of Longfall. Linus of Metina. Rainfarn of Atra! Horm Makaspark of Meicht! Donimir of Troy! Guy de Boisfren! In service to the Duchess! Delwyn of Craigiau! Count Ty of Dondal! And say of Lyria and Rivia a prince! Revix of Forhorn! For Gregoire of Mount Gorgon, let out a roaring cheer! 
the faint fire of silence tony champion from last year today's winner of contests his victory to secure shall face a great war in a challenge severe does ignorance demand a bard in deceit does someone need telling how tony's proceed graphics of forehorn is that what you call yourself? You shan't fool me. To this day I bear marks where I met your steel. But don't you remember? I am Tai of Dorntal, and I swear to you, before the tourney's end, I shall have added another book to that collection on your muck! Done. Then step aside. You're in my way. The Tony's protector! The mate, Vivian! Her beauty entrances both beasts and men! My heart's greetings, dear knights! May my grace guide you and show you the path of honor, valor, and glory! Accept my wishes of good fortune, sir, and devote all your strength to the tourney, and only it. The time has come for you, Sir Knight. Mount your steed, swift be your flight. Ladies and gentlemen of lineage illustrious, soon steeds shall swarm like ants most industrious. To beat time's passage, they'll ride like the game. What a sight to behold, what a lark, what a tale. Before a ceramic of forehorn dubbed, his spurs flash like lightning to a shine they've been rubbed. Let's go! And he's off! We the thunderous roar, hoofs pound the ground. No legion of drummers could make such a sound. Tension, what stress, what a marvelous race! A race of such style, such grace, such speed! To watch was a pleasure, a treat indeed! To honor our entrance, praise each fair night! We shall feast from eve till dawn's first light! The finest of wine and fruit shall be served if you've blood in your veins, come collect what's deserved. 
I congratulate you. Here, your price. A saddle adorned with your crest. Many thanks. By the way, my mate saw a man with white hair sneak out of my tent. Would you know who it might have been? No idea. How juvenile. Congratulations on your win. In stellar style, no less. Ah, I no longer regret I was not able to participate. Almost. We must drink to this. Come with me to the feast. We shall await Vivian together. Lead the way. So, any thoughts on Vivian? Her beauty is striking. That is not what I ask. Still too early to say anything I'd be willing to stand behind. Managed to figure one thing out. She uses powerful magic, masking illusions. Do you mean to say she might in truth look different than she seems? Only guessing right now. We've still some time before Vivian arrives. Let us drink. To Vivian, may you find the means to aid her. To Vivian. Ah, when I first laid eyes on her, I finally understood what all those poems and ballads were trying to say. Love's not poetry alone. Sometimes it's prose, and sometimes it's just plain ugly. You say that only because you do not know Vivian as I do. A life with her would be sweetness itself. Actually, you don't know her all that well either. Dropped something. I demand satisfaction. You've insulted me twicely. And twicely ought to be enough. You refuse to duel? Then I shall show you how I treat cowards! some serious thought to whether you want to face me for a fourth. I shall kill you, freak! You got your chance, sir. You failed to seize it, and now you must leave. We shall meet again, mutant. swells to behold this beautiful celebration of valor and honor, and to witness you, who embody the chivalric virtues in your lives, strive for greatness. Yet, after a time of combat must come a time of peace and respite. Thus, I invite all who fought in the tourney to this feast held in your, and none others, honor. And should any among you crave solitude, Private tents await you nearby. The group melee shall take place on the morrow. Glory shall be within grasp for each and every one of you. The best among you shall have the honor to face our reigning champion. 
the famed Grégoire de Gourgon, victor of last year's tourney. Celebrate, make merry, revel as you will, yet be mindful of the trial that awaits you tomorrow. Follow her. We shall meet in your tent before your last contest. You must help her. Master Richard, you wouldn't be sitting in a tent. That grey dome scoundrel, ever seeking Lady Vivian, sunk her the million. Strange. We're sure I'd find her here. Flew off. Worth going after. Looks like the bird's leading me somewhere. over the hill. Might be quicker to pass through the cave. Witcher. Lady Vivian? Counted on me getting lost. I did. I thought you no different from the knights. Good at tourneys, hopeless in the face of true danger. I was mistaken. Here you come to this clearing often. This is where it all began. And as I was not able to evade you, save myself from you, then I want it done here. In this very spot, with no witnesses. Want what done? While you are a witcher, 
You were hired to kill me, were you not? Then do so, now. And do it quickly, I beg you. I shan't resist. Witchers only hunt monsters. And even then, not all. You're no monster. Then what am I to your eyes? Most likely you've been cursed. Don't know who by or why yet, but hope to find that out soon. If you've no contract on my life, why take an interest at all? Did Guillaume put you up to it? Is that why? He wanted to help you. Asked me to do him a favor. Frankly, if I can do something for you, I'll do it, willingly. Why should I trust you? Because the Duchess trusts me? Because I'm a freak, too? Because cases like yours are my bread and butter. Take your pick. You shall not turn on me. Use what I say against me. You shall not tell anyone? Can't promise anything till I hear what you have to say. Decisions based on appearances? Not a good idea. Regretted making those too often in the past. Ah, uh, so be it. I shall tell you what my mama once told me. When she was with child, expecting me, she and my father spent much time together near the wood, here in this clearing. Mama loved to listen to the Orioles sing. She would stroke her belly and say, My daughter should be as beautiful as that bird. Such is my wish. But a creature dwelt in the wood who envied my parents their happiness. One day it appeared before them to say the whole wood belonged to it, and they had dared to delight in something that was not theirs. It demanded payment, and when my parents said that they had nothing, he claimed their unborn daughter as its own. Parents ever describe the creature? They called it a nymph born of the deep woods, with no mother or father. But I was too young, too distraught by the curse's onset to ask after details. What happened after that? Nothing at first. I came into the world a perfectly normal child, and my parents forgot that day's events. But fifteen summers into my life, the curse began to show. Initially only when the moon was full. But now it's advanced so that even in daytime I must use magic ointment to mask its symptoms, to look normal. Thus I thought someone had discovered my secret, then hired you to kill me. In fact, I was resigned to death in coming here. Perhaps death would be preferable to my complete and permanent transformation. For I fear that is what lies in store. Ointment you use includes a potent magic ingredient. You don't have the immunity mages have. Use heavy doses, or normal doses too long, and it could be dangerous to you. I sensed this. The very reason I knew I would have to give it up in the end, and bid my human form a final farewell. The curse. It could be reversible. Once ran into a baron transformed into a cormorant, ostensibly for good. Managed to cure him completely. And you truly think you could do something like this for me? Can't guarantee a thing. Tough case, yours. You were cursed before birth. That alone complicates things. Also, you claim the curse is increasing its hold. Symptoms are progressing. Could try transferring the curse onto someone else. What? Out of the question. I shall not allow it to ruin an innocent life. Is this the only method you know? Only one that's completely safe. So there is another. Pretty quick to reject help. Why is that? The curse once transferred would probably have a weaker hold on the new host. Lots weaker. I do not even wish to hear of it. All right, there is another. Ancient ritual. We'd need an Oriole egg. Should release the curse's grip permanently. Gotta warn you, though. Could have serious consequences. Consequences? What kind? Curse was cast before you came into this world. Ritual involved transferring it to an as-yet-unhatched chick. You'd be free. Thing is, 
You could be left with the average lifespan of an Oriole. Seven years. I understand. Alas, every rose has its thorn, and there are no happy endings. Yet truth be told, I never thought I would get one. I came here prepared to die. Yet you wish to give me seven years of life. Real life, free life. This is no dilemma. I agree. Wholeheartedly. I see why. I understand. Don't have to decide just yet. Think it through. I will. They must miss me at the tawny grounds by now. Shall we? Return. Let's. But are you gonna... Ah, uh, yes. I cannot appear there all in feathers. Pardon me for a moment. change at will? No, but I discovered the water of this pool helps. Its effects are brief, but I can always be sure of them. Hmm, interesting. Come. Did you learn anything? Yeah. Then speak, man. Can you not see I'm out of my mind with worry? What ails her? She asked me not to talk about it. But I want only the best for her. Perhaps I shall be able to help or, I don't know, console her at the least. We were both right, actually. It is a curse. One that's transforming Vivian into a bird. Her condition's getting worse. Gods! A curse that is a worse affliction than disease. What now? Can you help her? That'll depend on her. I'll try if she asks me. Significant risks involved, though. Shortening her life to about another seven years included. What? This is not what we agreed. Tough case. Curses hold on her grow stronger every day. And I'm a witcher, not a miracle worker. Heard of one other method that could work. Curse could be lifted via her reflection, say in a pool of water. Thing is, we'd need someone who'd willingly assume the burden of the curse. Take it on in her stead. You mean, become a bird themselves? Theoretically. See, curse grows weaker once it's transferred. Might end up as just an appetite for seeds and worms. All outcomes are on the table, though. Death included. I am prepared to sacrifice, give my life for her, just as King Friedank's knight did for the beautiful Queen Sero. Knew that already. But are you prepared to swallow bugs for the rest of your life? <laughs> yes. Which method do you believe to be best for Vivian? Don't know yet. But you have some notion, have you not? Do not tell me you seriously consider drastically shortening her life when I stand prepared to shoulder the burden. Method using a pool of water is better. Poses no threat to Vivian. Naturally. Y you must know you can count on me. I shall bear it all. But Vivian, I fear she might be too proud to agree to such a thing. I'll meet her after the last contest. Talk to her. She could agree. I'm counting on you, Witcher. And I'm content we finally know something. What now? We know all, so you need not see the tourney through. You could withdraw. True, I shall get an earful from the Herald should you fail to show for the last contest, but it's nothing I can't handle. So, what will it be? I don't back out of anything. I'll take part in the last skirmish. Besides, Vivian will be busy till the tourney's end. Indeed. In that case, you must meet the other knights of your team. They await near the arena's entrance, by the training ground. Got it. Thanks.
I know now the two teams' rosters. I shall be captain of ours. That means you shall do as I say for the duration of the fight. Is this clear? Palmer and Alonful will lead the opposing team. With this skirmish, we commemorate the Battle of Fox Hollow of 1218. When a hands of southern outlaws led by Haller the Brown attacked Tucson only to be driven off by brave knights, thus setting a precedent. Since that day, knights errant have guarded the Duchy's borders. Palmerin drew the short straw, so his team shall play the barbarian Haller's men. Any questions? None. If you swing your blade as deftly as you shoot, we shall win. Good luck. It is time, gentlemen. Take your weapons and proceed to the arena. A cheer for the knights, the ladies, the lords. For our next entertainment, the team shall cross swords. Two rifle crews, two coteries shall fight. Full tilt, till one stops to its knees. Whose virtue ignores, or lance blows, unclean, shall forever be branded as shameful, obscene. While the knights prepare, let me say I'm elated to behold such a crowd on edge, breath-baited. Whoever here wins, the past champion shall face. All others must leave, heads bowed in disgrace. Let us begin! Crowd, race a ruckus! Blood, sweat and tears shall soon follow in buckets! Fertuso! Foster! The lust to do the kill, I will beat it out of you! When all the dust clears, shall he have won? Now! Woo! You shall perish, evil poor! Seen a fight quite so glorious. For showing such verve, each knight was victorious. Yet in tourneys as in life, but one champion may reign. Today he is the one. Praised be his name. He felt a whole host slew the most. To Raphix of Forhorn, who the strength of lions boasts. 
He sails through all trials. Each test he passed with ease. But now awaits the last. Will it bring him to his knees? For Gregoire de Gorgon, who on this ground's last one, shall spar him for the title, and the day is done. To the tired Tremander, we salute your endeavors. Return to your wives, your loves, your whomevers. It is time. Step into the arena. Should you suffer grievous harm during combat, have you any last wishes, any missives you wish passed to your loved ones? Thanks, I'm fine. The brave knight Raphix hails from Forhorn. It might sound fictitious, yet there he was born. Now entering the grounds, a tight ton of infamy. Gregoire de Gorgon, victor of Lassis Tony. I wish both combatants good fortune and fame. They sink the crowns, the titans locked stairs, ferocious and spry as wolves hunting heads. Mesdames et Messieurs, our victor, our champion, the unequaled, Gregoire de Gorgon! Hip, hip, hooray! and teeth drink to bow. A wine for your teeth, a wine for your soul. The crowd cries in shock. Seraphic seems weak. Will he suffice? His fortunes look bleak. Champion! A sight to behold! He defeated Gregoire de Gorgon! Hail Ralphix! 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 As patron of this grand tourney, I have the honor to decorate our grand champion. His vow he made upon the harem. Doubtless the gravity of his knightly pledge upon the noble foul carried him to this splendid victory. He showed great courage, great strength, great composure. He fought nobly with honor and thus rightfully deserves the title of this year's Champion of the Arena. I need to talk to you. Not now. We shall meet later in my tent. I have duties to attend to, as do you. The folk will guard you. The least you should do is wave. my lady. Have you decided? I have. I stand by all I have said. I wish to endanger no one and thus choose the method involving an egg. If it's to be the egg of an oriole, I know where to find one. There is a nest in my clearing. Might you explain the nature of the ritual? Its exact course? Sure. want to tell you something, though. I think we should try the alternate method first. I was clear. It is out of the question. Let me finish. Second method's less than reliable. To put it simply, might work, might not. But it will. I shall save you, oh lovely Vivian. Why are you here, sir? This is a private conversation. He's not your foe. Got good intentions. You guessed right. He hired me. But only because he wanted to help you. Be not angry, my lady. 
You no longer bear this burden alone. I know all. You told him! I know a curse afflicts you, a curse which grows more severe by the day. I understand how you feel. My aunt, Countess de Lonfall, once contracted a strange illness which ate away at her from the inside. She grew weaker by the day, the light fading from her eyes. I remember her saying the worst was not the pain, but losing mastery of her own body. She was so helpless. I fear you feel the same. The Witcher knows a way to lift the curse from you and let it rest on me. I wish to do this, to take it from you, Vivian. Why? Because I love you. I might have died in the arena. I sought to slay a Shailmar for you. But now I see the fool I was. Now I see how I risked my life for no purpose. Yet with this, I can truly do something for you. I do not wish to inflict this horror on anyone. You saw how it looks, Witcher. I turn to you as one elder and hopefully one wiser as well. Do you think this a good idea? Worth a try as I see it. Original curse fell on an unborn child. Doubt it'll take hold as strongly when transferred to a full-grown man. You've now heard the expert opinion. Let us do this together, Vivian. Very well. I was prepared to die. Thus I am also prepared to attempt something mad. Now we must go to my pool in the woods, yes? Everything's agreed, so no point wasting any more time. Let's go. So, this is my true form. It is not too late. You may still change your mind. It will bring no shame. My mind is made up. My resolve is firm. If you can handle it, so will I. You are beautiful to me, even as you stand now. Oh, that's clearly rubbish. Shut your eyes, both of you, and don't move. Guillaume? Yes, my love? If you become as I am now, I wish you to know, I shall not leave you. Picture yourselves reflected in a pool of water. Focus on that. Open your eyes. Damn. I think it might have worked. How do you feel, in general? You feel it change, Guillaume? I was struck hard, as if by a battering ram, but 
now I, I feel not at all different, apart from a slight itch on my skin. Are you certain it worked? Yes, something happened, definitely. Must be an intersection beneath this pond. Powerful magic at work here. Look at Vivian. What now? Now? Now you get to live together, happily ever after. Still, watch yourselves carefully. Notice any troubling symptoms, find me. Naturally. I thank you, Garrett. Oh, and your payment. Oh, at last! I have so much to make up for. Balls to attend, distant lands to see. Free at last, as a bird! Ha! Huh? I found you droll. I had not noticed before. But you will not fly away without me. That remains to be seen, I think. But I too must thank you, Witcher. Don't mention it. You take care, both. <laughs>